And you've just heard Run by Hannah Linkvist Kinraid from the EP Murders and Melancholy. And I'm delighted to be joined by Hannah now. Hello, Hannah. Hi, Alistair. Nice to see you. Lovely to see you. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me coming all the way from Sweden this morning. Yes, very exotic. <laughs> <laughs> I love Sweden, I have to say. It's one of the countries I've been to quite a few times. Oh, really? I, yeah, oh. yeah. We could probably talk about it after. <laughs> yes, <laughs> probably. Let, let's do that. <laughs> so um, tell the listeners about Murders and Melancholy, because it's a really interesting EP. Yeah, okay. Um, well, the name is quite self-explanatory, I would say. Uh, it's about murders and it's about melancholy. Um, and it's I've, I've nicknamed it um, a musical genealogy, because it's about my family history, uh, or at least parts of it are about my family history and some of them are fabricated um but so i'm in sweden i'm half swedish half scottish and i've lived in sweden most of my life uh, i s studied music at perth college uh, about oh. 15 years ago uh, so i spent some years in scotland and i haven't really known very much about my family history since i'm i'm here and i'm born quite a lot later than everyone else in my family um so it was just by a a chance really uh my dad kind of mentioned a couple of years ago that um well you know your your granddad was from the Isle of Man who I never met uh and he allegedly ran away because he killed someone and that was you know quite a bit big news uh, for me anyway uh, I was quite shocked uh, and I couldn't help but get intrigued by the story so I started to you know try and dig up a bit more and find out a bit more about our family history and it just led me down a rabbit hole I suppose um so I started writing some songs about it. It was, I just needed to get it out of my system, I suppose, get it down somehow. Um, and I started writing songs and I thought, okay, how can I get this, you know, into, into an EP or get it recorded? And I started looking at different grants and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. And I stumbled on the Isle of Man Arts Council website and they offered grants and I applied for one and got it about, it's, it's two years ago now. Mm -hmm. uh, so the EP was, you know the the working name the working title was murders and melancholy and that was the whole uh, point of it to to focus on these stories uh and i spent a bit more time writing the songs after that uh and then i traveled to the isle of man in may on may in may this year um to record it um it's when i was reading about it i went to your band camp page and kind of read uh, a yeah. bit around it and it does seem like one of the more intriguing, you know, there's a, a there's a program here. Um, who do you think you are? They look mm. in a genealogy of people. I yeah, think we have the same. Would yeah. make an incredible uh, version of that. Yeah, it's some crazy it, stuff. It's it some crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if it'd be worthwhile kind of going through the songs yeah. individually, mm. um, because there's different stories to each one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um. So the first song that I wrote was "Oh Catherine," uh, and it's um, by chance again, I stumbled upon uh, a story about a woman called Catherine Kinraid that, who lived in uh, an Isle of Man uh, and she was the last woman on Isle of Man to receive the capital punishment in 1823 because she killed her sister and her unborn baby together with the sister's husband because they wanted to be together. And that was, you know, such a twisted story, really dark. Uh, mm. And they portrayed her in the in the documents that I found, they portrayed her as very sp special, like a strangely attractive and really uneducated, but still really charming. And I think the the priest that um, came to her when she was waiting for her punishment kind of developed some emotions for her in some way. Uh, and I was just really intrigued. Uh, so I started writing that. And it's it's I would say it's a modern folk song, really. Um, and after that, we kind of, I didn't really know what to do with it. I wasn't really sure if I wanted to use it, but it was such a strong story. So I wanted really to, to find a way to get it in the, in the EP. Um, and it was just maybe a month or two before I went out to the Isle of Man to record mm -hmm. that I, I thought maybe I can put a Swedish folk song into it and kind of mesh them together. And there's a really melancholy song called Visa från utan nira, which is an old traditional Swedish folk song. And it has, has a really sad story about unrequited love. And I thought this could actually fit quite well. Um, and when I merged them together, I thought, okay, this is it. We have we have something we can work with here. So so that's O Catherine. 
which is why the Swedish title is in brackets after yes. it. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what about the others? I mean, already we're touching on to some incredible stories here. I mean, yeah. Mm. Um, well, Ron, that you heard uh, just before we started chatting, um, that's actually about the women that were left behind. Um, so when my grandfather ran away in the 1920s, uh, he never returned to the Isle of Man. So he never met his parents again. He never met his mother again. And I kind of wrote it in the sense of what it would be like to be her. You know, he vanished from one day to the next and she didn't know what happened to him. And um, she was apparently, uh, she struggled with mental health problems and she was institutionalized, uh, but she was a, a magnificent piano player. Uh, and I don't know very much about her, but apparently she was, you know, quite a special lady. Uh, so it's it's written out of her perspective, I'd say, what it's like to to be the one that's left behind. And you have a, 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 the I think the longest track on the EP is it again. Is it two songs together? Yes, yes. It was. It's supposed to be, but we didn't split them because it's kind of segued quite nicely into each other. So. Yeah, it's it's Hiriath, uh that goes into Askmouth, and um, Hiriath is is a play on the word Hiriath that means it's a Welsh word and it means to to long for a, a home or a sense of home that might not be there or might never have existed even. So it's like homesickness, um, and I that really resonated well with me that word. Uh, so I I wrote the melody and then I tried to find a way to use the the letters of the word over and over in the lyrics so it's the same if you look at the lyrics it's the same uh, h-i-r-a-e-t-h mm -hmm. over and over um and it's i wanted it to i don't know i want i wanted it to portray a lot of feelings but not being too personal i suppose so it's it's quite poetic in a sense um and then when i was playing it at home i kind of started going into this um, second track, the Uskmouth track. And the story behind that one is that my grandfather, uh, he served during the Second World War and he was on a ship called Uskmouth mm. uh, uh, in the Bay of Biscay and the ship was sunk and he was on it and everyone was supposedly dead. Uh, so his wife got a telegram saying he had died in the accident and luckily a French ship had come by and picked up a few of the, the crew so he survived. Um the story in my family is that he was one person before this occasion and then he changed quite drastically into another person when he came back and what we would call ptsd maybe or shell shock with yeah. modern modern words um so the, the it's an instrumental track but i'm i'm trying to portray the sense of learning that something's maybe not right and noticing all these different elements on the ship that's going wrong but you can't really say if it's going to go your way or if it's going to end up in a disaster and it becomes increasingly I play a lot of bum notes and it's on purpose it's it's very uh, uncomfortable to listen to for some people uh, but it's it's supposed to emulate the sense of you know panic and trauma really I think that's such a, a fascinating explanation because you're absolutely right there's something discordant about yes. it, mm, mm. Uh, and uh, it, and the the music with the others, it's melancholy definitely, but it doesn't have that kind of slightly, and yeah, unsettling yes. that, that track has. So that's yes. all deliberate. That's that's really fascinating to hear. Yeah, yeah. And I was I was really unsure when I came to the to the studio with it and uh, spoke to the musicians. I was I was a bit unsure because I said it might not be a good idea. I have an idea, and it might not you know carry because it's so strange. Because it's, if you don't know me or if I hadn't told you about it, you'd think, oh, maybe she can't play very well. You know, <laughs> she's kind of slipping all over the place and messing up all the uh, the chords. But it, it was kind of a, a sense of it going into disarray more and more. And we had a discussion with the with the percussionist. We were talking about, you know, uh, you have to go bigger and you have to go let, let loose, lose control and, and really... Uh, like go bananas you know and he was he was quite reluctant at first you know rhythm is you're supposed to keep on track that's the thing with mm -hmm. rhythm and I was telling him to you know just lose all that and do whatever you would like and drop everything um 
but I was quite I was quite um, inspired by A Day in the Life by the Beatles. Yes. In the end, you have the whole building of the uh, orchestra. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. The, phases of the orchestra is falling apart. Yes, but... and it's it's really like a visceral reaction. Mm. You get quite, you know, you get goosebumps, and you, it's really uncomfortable, but it's so epic at the same time. And I was trying to, you know, it's not in any way like that, but it's it's. Uh, I was trying to aim for something along those lines. And a well, there's another track, isn't there? Remind yes. me, Griba. That's it, Griba. Yeah. Yes, so Griba. What's that uh, about? Um. Well. It's actually about um, my aunt, my aunt called Hilary, who lived in Lonehead all her life, uh, or Pennycook and then Lonehead in, in Scotland. And her dad was my grandfather. And her middle name was Griba, which is a, a place on Isle of Man. It's a, it's a village in Isle of Man. And she was very, very proud to have a Manx heritage. And she spoke about it a lot. And she was the one, uh, she was quite a bit older than my dad. So she had the nice dad in the, you know, before pre-war dad. And then my my father had a different experience with his father. Um, and she passed away a few years ago. And she was one of the people that was really, she really made sure that I was part of the family, even though I was so, so far away. Uh, and it felt like a lot of the, the stuff that she went through and a lot of the things that she was, I wanted to, you know, eternalize it somehow. It's, so it's an ode to her, I'd say. Yeah, so it's 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 marking uh, th that story, her story, and this that's what I think about them. Did you see these the the, the songs, particularly the the um, the um, in, in the tradition of the ballad, you know, the kind of almost in the murder ballad tradition. Yeah, yeah, it, it almost became that. I, it wasn't it wasn't on purpose, I wouldn't say, but it's I, I've I used to play. Uh, a lot of folk music. Uh, I I was a violinist at first, and I I did a lot of the Swedish folk music, but also Scottish and Irish folk music. And there's a, a really strong storytelling in that that I mm. I think kind of stuck with me, even though if I wasn't trying to make folk music per se, it kind of I think it's there. That tradition is still very much prominent in the EP. Yeah. I think absolutely. These are almost to me like modern modern ballads because. They are your stories, or at least they are your family stories, mm. that, which is kind of what the original ballads were. And were, yeah. you know, maybe the person in the next village would have a different version and and, and things like that. Mm. So you've got these stories. I'm interested in how the the full songs come about. How did you approach? Um, did you have? Um, you know, you've got these initial stories. When did the music come in? How did they become whole, if you like? Um. Well, I, ha I had lots of rough ideas and I sent um, demos out to the, to the studio, to Balagroove studio, where I was recording the EP because we never met before. So it was just like we had four and a half days that were going to be intense work days. So we had a lot of correspondence before that. And I sent them the demos and said, this is you know what I'm thinking. And I have some uh, references, like reference music uh, tracks and stuff. Um, and then I met up with, the guitarist uh, in in Scotland uh, before we went over and we started, he had some ideas about what the guitars should do. And we started, you know, chatting together with how to build the actual songs to arrange them. And then when we were in the studio, because it was such a short time and it was such an intense experience, but I would say it was almost like people with different um, backgrounds and music all kind of converged in, in one space. And we really, everyone had some of their flavor or influence put into it. Um, so I couldn't have imagined it would end up sounding the way it did because it was uh, it just happened in the studio, I would say. A lot of creative conversation just taking place and lots of ideas being thrown around and trying things and most of them actually stuck. It sounds intense to do over that period of time. Yes, it was very intense. Uh, it was, I would say, life-changing experience for me, yeah big big experience and in that to, to kind of see or hear what's your initial ideas and such a personal uh, uh, connection being realized mm. I can see it must be uh, um, quite a kind of moving experience to hear that yes and and also because um I have a, I have an underlying health condition so I wasn't actually sure I was going to be able to, to do that project because when I applied for the grant uh, it was quite stable and then 
the year after it kind of disheveled a bit and I was really unsure if I could manage to pull it off. Uh, so I got an extension from the, the Arts Council, which was very gracious, and I still wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. um, but things kind of stabilized during the winter of 2023, 2024. And I just said, if I don't do it now, I'm, I'm never going to do it. So it's now or never kind of a deal. But I always had in the back of my mind that, you know, I, I might have to cancel everything because if my health takes a, you know, turn for the worse, then I, I won't be able to go. Yeah. So it's it's a big thing for me personally as well to be able to manage manage this project because, you know, it was a dream for a long time, but I wasn't actually sure I was going to be able to do it. So I'm well, very, very grateful. And uh, it's an incredible collection of songs. I absolutely love it. I really kind of connected with it Thank uh, you. immediately. And I think it does. It's it's one of the best modern examples of the ballad tradition that I, I've heard in some time. Oh, really? Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. That's, now, because of the situation, you know, you've got the geographical, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're in Sweden. Is there any chance that these will ever be done live? <laughs> uh, well, that's a problem, isn't it? You know, I have one musician in Scotland, two in Isle of Man, and I'm here. Um, so I think the chances are pretty bleak, to be honest. Um, I'm doing a a live show just with me doing yeah. the piano and singing uh, in a month's time, about a month's time. And that's the only live performance I have that's planned anyway. Uh, it would be lovely to do it live. That's I think that um, says quite a lot about my personal story as well. Yeah. Through the years that musically I've had a lot of connections in the UK or in Scotland and I've been here and it's been hard to find people here to to play with and res resonate with so it's it's the same this time around that I've had you know really good connections with people that are quite far away which is lovely but also a bit sad yeah mm. which kind of in a strange way fits the tone of the whole EP yes very much. The, the I, melancholy I, of it. yes I usually say I'm not so much the murder part yet but I'm a lot of the melancholy so I mean, to me, it's got a one-off special Celtic Connections event written all mm. over it. I think it would get tick all of their boxes. But... Oh, yeah. Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's interesting as well that you that I, I just finished recording a podcast, which is set just after the Second World War. It's about a novel, sorry, set just after the Second World War mm. in Jersey. Mm. So you've got that small island thing. And I guess the Isle of Man is similar in that a lot of people it's a small enough community and it's an isolated enough community that people know the stories and they maybe don't forget, you know, and, and all of these things. Is that what you found? Well, it was, I was quite nervous uh, to begin yeah. with just going there. Uh, Cause I, I'm the first, first one in my family to go there. My, my father never went right. and, um, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect at all. And I was a bit apprehensive, um, but really it was just a lovely experience. Everyone was so nice and kind and no one, I did a couple of interviews when I was before I went there and also on the island and they didn't focus on that at all it was more about the music and you know coming back that was the the main theme I think um so I I wish I'd known a bit more about the history it would be lovely to see you know if people remembered but I think most of those people are gone now because yeah. this if this happened in the 1920s I mean it's a hundred years ago since my grandfather left Isle of Man and the people that remember that story might not still be here you know so yeah and, and that kind of allows I guess for you to interpret it instead of having someone says I was there yes. I know because I was there you mm. get your own kind of scope to interpret it in your own way yes yes I'd say very much so I mean this is my uh, this is my idea of what, what happened and what it felt like and it might just be completely wrong but this is my version uh, which is you know a ballad again as you said before it's it's uh, you you put together a story and you make it into your own thing, even though there's obviously elements of what's true and historical. It's still my story. So, yeah. mm. Hannah, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. It's been an absolute pleasure. And as I've said to you before, I absolutely adore the EP. I think it's great. Thank you so much, Alistair. It was lovely talking to you. And this is Hannah Linkvist Kinraid and O Catherine. And I'm going to ask you to give us this the Swedish version as well. Visa från utan mira. Thank you.